Welcome to the Daily Dose of Hope, a Monday night edition of the Daily Dose of Hope. I am Chaplain Bob, and welcome. Thanks for being here. What is the Daily Dose of Hope? You're probably wondering that. What is the Daily Dose of Hope? The Daily Dose of Hope is a place that you can come to on a daily basis to connect directly with God. And the way we do that is pretty simple. We use one of the 66 books that make up the Holy Bible— there are 66 books that make up the Old Testament and the New Testament of the Holy Bible. Today, you can see over here on the screen next to me, we're going to be in the Old Testament book called Psalm. Many people know the Psalms. Uh, they've heard Psalms before because they've grown up maybe in the church or they've, uh, you know, they just know the name. Psalm is a very popular book in the Bible. In fact, it's pretty easy to find. Pretty much you just open the book to the middle of your Bible, and you'll find the psalm. Now, we're going to be in Psalm 86, verse 15, and I'll get into that in a second. But first, let's ask God to bless our time together. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a mighty, powerful God. You are the one and only true God. We say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing, your care, and your guidance, Lord. Through the days of trouble, through the days of sickness, through the days of uh, challenges, whatever it happens to be, Lord, we know that you are always with us. You always have our back. Thank you, Lord. We love you for that, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would bless our time as we're going to be in Psalm 86 tonight, the first five verses. Help us to comprehend, help us to stay focused, and help us to learn. We love you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name. Amen. Okay, again, my name is Chaplain Bob. I'm a grateful believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm your host of The Daily Dose of Hope. Now, today, what I want you to do is I want you to look down here below me in the description box on Facebook and on YouTube and on Rumble. I'm going to have down below here in the description box all of our links to our YouTube channel, to our Rumble channel, We'd love for you to click on those and subscribe to those two channels. Third thing you can do is go to the, to the Facebook page for the Daily Dose of Hope and like the Facebook page and follow the Facebook page. That would help the algorithm. It would help many, many more people to find this message and to know God and know Jesus better. Okay, so we are in Psalm 86, verse 1 to 5. And I'm titling this, Have Mercy on Me. Now, I'm wondering if you've ever had a time in your life where you've wanted someone or something to have mercy on you, and you've cried out for mercy. I'm sure that many of us could raise our hand for that. Then there's some of you, I'm included in this, where I've asked God to have mercy on me for things that I've done, maybe the predicament that I was in, but I ask God to have mercy on me. Well, we're going to be reading a psalm here, at least the first five verses of Psalm 86, where the writer, which is David, asks God, God the Father, to have mercy on him. So let's go ahead and open the Bible, go through these five verses, and see what we can learn. Verse 1, Bow down your ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am holy. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I cry to you all day long. Rejoice the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive, and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. Now again, this is a psalm of David. A lot of people think that this, the psalms are all written by David, but they're not. Um, but this one happens to be a psalm of David, and David is calling himself here, uh, in this first five verses, he calls himself a servant of God. Uh, he calls himself poor and needy. Those are just a couple of things that I, I uh, drew out of this. And he wants God, he reminds God how merciful he is 
to his people, and he wants mercy. David wants mercy. Now, you'll need to go through and read all of Psalm 86 to find out why David wants mercy. But we're going to look at the significance of this for us. Okay? First, verse, verse 1. Bow down your ear, O Lord. Hear me. Now I wonder if any of you have ever asked God to hear your prayers. Some of you might think that it's rude to ask God to bow down his ear to hear you, but it's not. It's okay. David did it, and if David did it, you can do it. The next line in this, in this first verse says, For I am poor and needy. Now, this is not the poor when we think about not having money. Okay, many times we think poor or being poor is about not having enough financial resources. But you can be poor in many different things, uh, in the many different aspects of life that have nothing to do with finances. And many times in the Bible, the Bible talks about the poor a lot. There are hundreds and hundreds of verses on the poor. But it's not always referring to financial resources. David is calling himself poor and needy. He's got a desire. There's something that he needs. And he's calling himself poor. He's without something that he needs. And he is calling on the Lord. He says, just bend your ear. Bow down your ear to me, Lord, and hear me, please. I'm poor and needy. Verse 2, he says, preserve my life. Now he starts to get to the idea of this. He's saying, I need my life saved here, Lord. We don't know in this context if he's being attacked. Again, you can go on further in the context to find out. I'm not going to give that part of the story away. But he's saying he wants his life restored. Preserve my life, for I am holy, doing the best I can to be righteous, Lord. You are my God. He tells God, you are my God. You are the one I believe in. You are the one I have faith in. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in that situation where you've cried out to God like this, Lord, save me. Uh, I'm trying to do the best I can to be holy. You are my God, and I'm your servant. I trust you. I need your help, Lord. Verse 3, be merciful, David says, to me, O Lord, for I cry to you all day long. Now I wonder how many of you have had situations in life where you've cried out to the Lord, literally crying to the Lord. Not figuratively speaking, but literally crying to the Lord. Then you know exactly what David is going through here. David says, I cry to you all day long. Please be merciful to me. That's why we titled this, Have Mercy on Me. This is a great, can you see this? This is a great psalm, at least this passage of Psalm 86 is great for you to memorize in those difficult times. Now, we don't want to be in difficult times. No one wants to go through difficulty in life. But the fact of the matter is, life is full of storms. You're either about to go into a storm, in the middle of the storm, or you're coming out of a storm. That's just life. That's called life in 2022. And David here gives us an antidote. Cry out to the Lord. Beg him for mercy. Verse 4. Rejoice the soul of your servant. Bring back the joy in my life, Lord. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Now David's reminding the Lord once again that he's giving himself to the Lord. He's he wants to be a servant of the Lord. He wants to do what the Lord wants him to do in life. And he says, Rejoice the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. I'm all in. You know, one of my good friends uh, who I've been in a Bible study with for 20-something years, I think this year is the 21st year of the Bible study, this man is a semi-professional uh, 
poker player. And in poker, when you think you have the best hand, better than anybody else sitting at the table, you push all of your chips or all of your money in because you have utmost confidence that you're going to win that hand. This, David says here, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. I'm, I'm all in, Lord. I'm completely yours, Lord. He's begging for this mercy. In verse 5, for you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive. He reminds God that he knows God is a forgiving God. He reminds God how good God is. He's, he's not telling God something that God doesn't know. He's reminding God that he knows that, that David knows that the Lord is good and that his Lord is ready to forgive always. And the last line here in verse 5, he says, And an abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. Lord, you are abundant in mercy. I know this about you, Lord. That's what David's saying to God. I know you're abundant in mercy for all those who call upon your name. Now imagine in your life, you might be having good times right now, but maybe perhaps in the next month or two months or five months or year, you end up in a situation where you face a storm and you need mercy. Things are difficult. You feel like you're going to get through it, but you need mercy. It's just getting a little bit too much in life. Call upon the name of the Lord. That's what David's saying here. David's saying, remind him how good he is. Let him know that you know that he's willing to forgive. Let him know that you love him. Let him know that you're all in. You're on his team. Then ask him for the mercy. David says something here that's a promise. That God is willing to give mercy to all who call upon his name. Now, the mercy doesn't happen right away. Sometimes the mercy takes a few weeks or a few months or a few years or a few decades before the mercy happens. God's timing is different than ours. But you need to talk to God when you need mercy. Call upon his name. Ask him to help you. Ask him to restore that situation that you're in. And I know, based on these words that are written by David, that God will come through for you. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, Mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a mighty and powerful God. You are the one and only true God. Thank you for a, a great day today, uh, a wonderful day. Uh, thank you, Lord, for some rest that I had. This is normally my day off, as you know, Lord, but uh, I, got a, I got some rest in, which was good. And I'm glad to be back here on the air uh, broadcasting this for your kingdom, Lord. Lord, we thank you and praise you for being a good father, a great father, and thank you for the mercy that you bring to us when we call upon your name. We pray all this in Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name. Amen. Okay, so um, I am going to take tomorrow off, not because I'm celebrating. I think tomorrow is like the Chinese New Year or something like that, but because my son is off tomorrow, my wife is off tomorrow. She doesn't have um, her school uh, tomorrow. She's a nursing student. Um, and so I'm going to take the day off as well, and maybe we'll do something fun as a family. So I'll take Tuesday off tomorrow. I'll be back here. If you're just watching the videos, it doesn't matter what day of the week is. This is only for the live viewers, people that watch us live every day. But I'll be back on Wednesday uh, in a couple of days, and we'll have another brand new sermon for you. And uh, continue to look up, everybody. Things are getting better every single day. And uh, I think a lot of you know what I'm talking about. And uh, I am uh, just asking you to continue to pray for a patient in Southern California. Her name is Wynn, and she is a 60-year-old Vietnamese immigrant to the United States who found out she had a brain tumor. And she is in critical condition after having brain surgery. And we'll hear more details on her tomorrow, how she's doing. So I'll 
I'll update you in a couple of days. But continue to pray for her healing and her full recovery. She really needs to have full recovery. They opened up her brain to take out part of uh, the tumor. So we can be praying for that. All right, everybody. God bless you. We'll see you next time. I'm going to leave you with a little Skyly Shea. Easy to forget. Bye-bye.